Some tips to help you choose a crossbow. That's this episode of Death by Bungie. If you want to enjoy the outdoors, if you want to get into hunting, if you want to get into crossbow hunting, this is a great video for you. I'm going to offer you some suggestions and some tips on choosing a crossbow that's right for the job. If you're already into crossbow hunting, you are already got a crossbow and you're already all set up, you might enjoy this video anyway. I get tons of questions on this YouTube channel, tons of questions on our Facebook page as well about different crossbow models, about which one's best, about the best ones on the market, can I do a video about the top five crossbows, that kind of thing, and I cannot do that. The bottom line is there are tons of great crossbows on the market today, tons of great information out there about those crossbows, and it's changing constantly. There is no way that I could review all all of those crossbows and offer an intelligent opinion about it. I just can't do it. There are plenty of websites out there that would do a far better job of that than I can do. In fact, when I went to the Great American Outdoors show down in Harrisburg this past spring, I ran into a Death by Bungie subscriber down there. Alex and I went around the archery section of that show and saw a ton of great crossbows, a lot of great equipment down there. There is something for everybody and every budget if you're interested in getting into crossbow hunting. At that show, and every time I look at new crossbow models, I am more and more impressed. There are crossbows out there that are way faster than Bungie. There are crossbows out there that shoot a lot higher feet per second. They're, they have all kinds of other features that are fantastic. So do your research, get online, look at those reviews, and look for videos that review the specific model that you're interested in. This video is not so much about that, about specific models. This video is just to explain the concept of crossbow hunting a little bit better for you maybe, and also offer some tips if you're out there looking at that market. Every time I go and look at the new crossbows that are on the market, I get all excited about them and I think, man, I've got to upgrade. I have to go upgrade. But then I go out and I sight in bungee here, I get it all sighted in, I shoot it a few times and realize what a great piece of equipment I already have. So that's really my first tip to you. Avoid the latest and greatest. Don't feel like you have to have the fastest crossbow on the market. There's absolutely no reason why that would be the case. Bungie here is an Excalibur Axiom that I bought back in 2010. It is more than capable of doing the job for all of the big game here in northeastern Pennsylvania. I will happily take a shot at any deer that walks in front of me with this crossbow, and I will get a pass through with a proper shot. Uh, same thing for bears. I would have no problem shooting a black bear with this and anything smaller than that. I shot wild boars, I've shot a bobcat, I've shot a lot of different animals with this thing. So this crossbow is more than adequate for the job. So that's why I say if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Stick with what works. Bungie here works and I'm not going to upgrade until I have to. You don't have to break the bank in order to get into crossbow hunting. There are a variety of models out there for almost every budget. Nothing about hunting is cheap. I've said that before. You're going to spend some money in order to get a proper crossbow. But that doesn't mean you have to spend $1,500 or more on a crossbow. This Excalibur Axiom in 2010, I purchased this crossbow along with a quiver, four arrows, uh, the cocking rope I think came with it. It was an entire package from Excalibur and the whole package was a little bit under $600, I believe. Shipped right to my door. All I had to do was put the limbs on and assemble it. Not a big deal. Um, that's, you know, came with a scope and everything. So that to me, and again, I'm still using this that, how many years later? I mean, you, you can't ask for more than that. While I was researching this video, I came across an article online, American Hunter, uh, the magazine that comes with your NRA subscription. I am a lifetime member in the National Rifle Association, a proud lifetime member. And that's actually probably my favorite outdoor magazine, my favorite hunting magazine. But in that article, they said, look, buy the best you can afford. Look for the most expensive crossbow you can get and buy the best you can. I kind of disagree with that. I take a lot of issue with that. Would I rather spend $600 on a crossbow and have $1,400 sitting around in order to use for the accessories, maybe go on trips, you know, pay some bills, whatever, or would I rather just spend $2,000 on a crossbow and just have the crossbow? 
As nice as that $2,000 crossbow is, I'd rather have $1,400 in my pocket in order to get the most out of my $600 crossbow package. <laughs> Now, like I said, when I bought Bungie here, it came with a scope on it, already had a scope. I've upgraded that scope to a higher model from Excalibur. The scope is very important. I think when you are looking at crossbows, you need to make sure that you get a crossbow with a scope. You do want the scope. They make crossbows still today, I believe, that have iron sights on them. I don't like that as much, and I think a scope is, a, is pretty much, in my opinion, a mandatory piece of equipment. By that same Note, however, I don't think you have to have the most expensive scope on the market. First thing to remember is, this isn't rifle hunting. I'm not looking through a scope at a target 300 yards away. I'll never do that with this crossbow, at least not with the intent of taking a shot. I'm only looking at 10, 20, 30 yard shots with this crossbow, and for that reason, I only need a scope that's very clear, crystal clear, good and low light, out to 30, 40 yards or so. Anything beyond that, the, you really don't need the same level of optics that you would need with a rifle. Uh, the magnification, I say stick with whatever your manufacturer recommends, but a 4x magnification, a four times magnification is perfect for a crossbow scope. I, it might be too much for some people, too little for others, but that's something that you can play with. But nonetheless, a scope I think is an important piece of equipment. How good does that scope do in low light? Another very important characteristic. Deer, at least here anyway, they're really active right before dark, and that's when it all, everything comes out, and I gotta start worrying about it right there before dark. So for that reason, low light's very important. Do you want a red dot scope or a green dot scope? They do make scopes with illuminated reticles, scopes with illuminated dots in them, not to project a dot, I'm talking about scopes that while you're looking through it, it puts a dot where you would be aiming. Helps you see the reticle a little bit better. People who use them, some of them complain that that reticle becomes too bright. And because that reticle is too bright, that dot is too bright, it actually obscures the view of what your target is, of what you're looking at. So just take that into account. I recommend, if at all possible, that you try out your crossbow before you uh, buy one. I did not try out this model before I purchased it. I got it in the mail, like I said, and totally happy with it. I got lucky. Now, what about the draw weight? What about the poundage? What do I need for crossbow hunting? Now, there's a few things to consider when we talk about poundage or draw weight. The first question I always get is, is 150 pounds enough? Is 170 pounds enough or whatever? Yeah, 150 pounds I think is enough to hunt white-tailed deer. I do believe that. Uh, 175 pounds might be preferred. Anything up to 200 pounds is uh, gonna be adequate to hunt white-tailed deer. You might be able to get away with less than 150 pounds, but I don't think you wanna look toward that. I would look at something that's at least 175 pound draw weight, as most modern crossbows are. Look in that neighborhood at, for starters, I believe. Bungie here is a 175 pound draw weight crossbow. Shoots an arrow on a good day about a 305 feet per second. So you can't beat that, that's good enough for me. And it sure gets the job done because accuracy is everything. I did another video on crossbow tips and that's one of my tips. Accuracy is everything. It's one of the rules of crossbow hunting. You have to have accurate shots. We always wait for good shots. We only take good shots and we wait for a good and accuracy. We make sure that our crossbow is accurate so that we have a point of impact exactly where we want it to be. If you can do that with your crossbow, accuracy is more important to me than fast arrow speeds or a high draw weight. I'm not concerned about that because an accurate shot, I'm gonna get a pass through and I'm going to kill a deer at 30 yards if I have an accurate shot. So accuracy is very important. I know speed does factor into accuracy and I will do another video on speed as it pertains to crossbows uh, later this summer. When we're talking about draw weight, when we're talking about the poundage of the bow, another thing to consider is how easy is it going to be to cock that crossbow? Are you gonna be able to do it in the field? I have no problems whatsoever cocking bungee here, 175 pound draw weight, using a rope cocker, no problem whatsoever cocking this crossbow. However, uh, if it were a 250 pound crossbow, that might be a difference. It might be a lot more for me to try and set. That could be a problem. Compound pro crossbows, the ones with the pulleys on both ends of the limbs, those are easier to cock, so you don't have to worry so much about that. In fact, I think even when you get into the really high draw weights with those compound crossbows, they're easier to cock. That's what I am told. I do not own a compound crossbow. I only have experience with bungee here. But cocking a uh, a recurve crossbow like this, if you get into those higher weights, that is one of the common complaints about recurve crossbows. So make sure that you can cock the crossbow before you buy it. 
Now, 175 pounds is great here in northeastern Pennsylvania, but if I travel northward and go after those really big black bears up in Ontario someday, like I hope to do, or if I was to go to hunt elk, or if I was going to uh, look at moose or something like that, hunt those animals with a crossbow, you probably want to go to 225 pound draw weights or greater. Uh, that's a big consideration, okay? Bungie here may not get it done on a moose, probably wouldn't, probably wouldn't get it done on a big elk or anything like that. Bears, I wouldn't have too much hesitation shooting a black bear with this, but if you're trying to hunt a grizzly bear, you want a lot more draw weight. That's just a fact. So keep that in mind as well. The last consideration when we're talking about draw weight, when we're talking about the pounds of the crossbow, is the legalities of it. Now, some states have restrictions on that. In New York, for example, the crossbow's draw weight has to be at least 100 pounds, but not more than 200 pounds. So it's got to be between 100 and 200, okay? That's a big deal. That's a big, important piece of information. You don't want to be out in the field with a 225-pound draw weight uh, crossbow and get a ticket or something like that. So keep that in mind as well. Look where you're going to hunt. Look at the regulations where you're going to hunt. And make sure you're complying with those regulations when you buy your crossbow. The last big question on crossbow hunting is recurve or compound, which one do I recommend? I think you already know my answer. I've had a recurve crossbow. I intentionally bought a recurve crossbow because recurve crossbows have a re reputation of being maintenance free, easier to work on. There isn't all the moving parts and all that sort of thing. So it's a little bit more maintenance free in that respect. And I also bought a recurve crossbow because I can uncock the crossbow. It's very easy to uncock it. You just reverse the process of cocking the crossbow, not a big deal. I can change the strings myself. I've never taken bungee here to a shop. I do everything myself. It's really, there isn't that much to do because it's pretty straightforward. It's relatively maintenance free. However, another big consideration about crossbows is volume. A lot of people are concerned with the volume of their crossbows. They go to great lengths to quiet them down, either by putting the cat whiskers on here or a red system or some other dissipator pads, all these other things, to reduce the noise of your crossbow. On my crossbow, I do not do that. I don't use any sound dampening system whatsoever. I am going to do another video on that this summer, so make sure you subscribe for that if you're interested in such things. If you are looking at crossbows, a compound crossbow is going to be quieter. So recurve versus compound crossbows. I know that's a big controversial subject, but the real the reality is in the end, I don't think it makes any difference. You get the crossbow that you're happy with. With your price point, you get the crossbow that is accurate and you will be happy with the results. The, in the end, the crossbow really isn't what kills the deer. The crossbow is not really what hits the target. It is the arrow that does that, it's the broadhead. So that's the important thing, really. Placement is everything, accuracy is everything. So the crossbow is only gonna get the arrow to that point. As long as it does that, you should be happy with it. So those are my thoughts in terms of whether you'd wanna recurve or a compound crossbow. Earlier this year, I released a video on my crossbow rig for spring gobbler hunting. Now that season has ended. I am sad to say I have not killed a gobbler still to this day with a crossbow. That will eventually happen. I'm going to keep plugging away year after year until I can get something like that done around here. But one of the things that was interesting about that video was in the comments section, people were asking about specific crossbows and there were responses to those comments about other people who had had access to those crossbows, had experience with those crossbows, and they were answering those questions. So please, I encourage you to do that here. Leave comments about your crossbow. Leave comments about what you like about that crossbow. And if you have questions about crossbows, post that comment here as well. And if I can answer it, I'll do the best I can. But hopefully other people will read those comments. And as time goes by, answer those comments and give the other pointers on those as well. So I really hope that you'll participate in that and leave some comments on this video and help some fellow and sister crossbow hunters out. Make sure you subscribe for further videos. Like us on the Facebook page for regular updates on what goes on around here in the kingdom of Bungie. And until next time, all hail Bungie! The second state <laughs> is number one in my book. Face recognition. Face recognition. Yes, that's good. Face recognition. No. Come on. And a boy. That's facial recognition right there. Boy. That is some screen though. <laughs> All right. <clears throat>